Exit Primal came out of nowhere for me, and it wasn't until one of my friends posted a link to the open beta on Discord that I actually had any idea that it existed. And now, over the course of one night, I'd say I'm a bit of an expert now. It reminds me a lot of Warframe, EDF, Crackdown, and various other hero shooters, and now there are too many that I can't even name them all. But I'm just going to get straight into it with the main menu, which is a tab barren, but it's to be expected since it's just a beta. The only options for playing right now are the main game mode and a firing range that you can try out everything on. There is also, for what I assume will be the premium currency called Bitcoin, which I'm sure isn't related to anything, and you also do get it for leveling up, but that's just a beta, so I'm not sure if that'll stay. And also, it seems to be an account level, but it could also be a battle pass. I'm not too sure about that. There's also a very rudimentary friend system that uses Capcom IDs instead of just Steam, but that's just because it's a cross-console game. There is no store present in the beta, so I can't actually spend any of the currency I got, but I'm sure that will be in the full game. Now that all the boring stuff is over, I'm going to quickly go over the rigs system before I get to the actual exosuits. You can select any rig with any exosuit, so there's actually a lot of versatility. But if you change your whole exosuit, you go into pilot mode, which I assume is to discourage swapping mid-fight. But the pilot gets an MP5, which does decent damage, it seems. I never actually tried to fight with just the pilot, so I can't test if it's actually usable in combat or not. But with every game, there's going to be people that just want to use the weakest possible weapon. So I would expect to see more people just running pilot. And honestly, I might do it because it might be fun. I don't know. All right, and first up we have the cannon, which is just a default rig. It has the, what seems to be infinite range, also pierces multiple enemies, and if you don't know what to run out, just keep this one on. Aid is pretty cool since it gives any exosuit a healing ability, but it's probably better suited for AFCOM mailing since, as you can see, this test, I mean, still gets shredded. Catapult is one of those rigs I didn't actually use too much since I thought there was already plenty of mobility in the game, so I didn't feel it was justified to actually have an extra button for mobility. Shield is another rig that I didn't use that much. I don't think it's actually bad, but it's definitely not that great for PvE, which is going to be most of the game. And it could be pretty good in PvP, but I didn't really try it. But all the tank classes I would run it on already have a way of shielding themselves. And for everybody else, I just think there's better options. Blade is definitely the best rig in the game, in my opinion, at least for this beta. It doesn't have the range or the damage the cannon has, but it does have the penetration and it stuns everything it touches, including other players in PvP. It also is pretty great since the majority of dinosaurs you fight are just swarms of little raptors, and this happens to be pretty good against helping with that. It also has a range of 50 meters. I didn't check every ability, but this one I actually cared about. I thought that I'd like Drill Fist more for extra damage in melee fights, but it ended up being way too long of a cast time and not enough damage to justify it. It also states that you can charge it for more damage, but I tested that out and it seems to do the same damage both ways, so I'm not really sure if that's a bug or not, or if I just read it wrong. The hammer isn't really a rig, but it plays like one, so I thought it would throw it in here. It does a big damage and a big shockwave around you, and it only spawns in the Omega Charge event though, and only one person per team can use it. But if the idiot holding your team's hammer finally dies, you can scoop it up and smack people with it. And I'll just go over the playable dinosaurs very quickly. I didn't get to play them that much all in the game, but I did try them out in the firing range for a bit. And I'm pretty sure the only way to get to play dinosaur is if you're on the losing team, and the game decides to award you one, but I'm not too sure. And out of all the dinosaurs, the T-Rex seemed to be the best since it has a huge jump and a range attack, but hitting a mobile bots in a targeting range isn't exactly a great way of telling viability, so... And even though I said the T-Rex is probably the best, I think the Triceratops is the most fun, in my opinion. Because anything with a Karma Charger mechanic, like in Left 4 Dead 2, has my vote for funnest. And trust me, I have seen plenty of it. Oh, fuck, Walter just got fucking obliterated. <laughs> that was kind of funny. Grab the idiots. Oh, never mind. So I get to try and grab the idiots. Oh my... God, you fucking gored me off the ledge. I just got a karma charger and fucking exo primal. And last we have the Carnotaurus, who in my opinion was the most boring dinosaur. Now you're still playing a dinosaur, so it's not all bad, but I don't know. He didn't have like a funny jump like the T-Rex or a epic charge like the Triceratops, but I mean, he does a lot of AOE damage with his head movement, so that's pretty cool. Gameplay in general is normally just moving from zone to zone to kill a certain amount of dinosaurs for the enemy team to advance. Honestly, at first it was pretty dry to me, but after I played it a little bit, kind of got used to it. 
Anyways, it reminds me of a less intense version of EDF, and as a bug blasting EDF fan, I approve. And sometimes instead of just go to zone, kill dinosaur gameplay, you can encounter different events, but they seem to be a little bit less common. Some I have found personally while playing were defend the VTOL, defend some uplink, defend some other area, escort mission. We had to, it's an escort mission? He do be walking though. He do be walking rather slowly. But don't you worry fellow escort mission hater, cause there are some fun events. And this one right here was mine. Wait, where's the next mission? Increasing hazard level to maximum. Hey, oh, this, is, this is a new one. Yep. My fucking it's neck's breaking, holy shit. Dinosaur. They're coming down the fucking Empire State Building. Oh, it's a superior dinosaur threat. Oh, is this gonna a be... giant ass T-Rex? No, man. <laughs> oh, swarm. Classic raptor swarm. Are they falling down the fucking tower? <laughs> that looks so... <laughs> That's good. I advise you to prepare what the fuck? <laughs> <fall> <laughs> this game's so sick. This game's awesome. Oh, the side bus. <laughs> Damn, bro. That's dude, actually what awesome. The fuck? What the fuck? There's so many. Dude, this game is too cool. And after you do about six or so of these PvE events, you get to the final event that is always a PvP mission. I've seen a lot of debate on if PvP belongs to this game. Personally, I enjoyed it, but I'll reserve my opinions till the end of the video. First up, we have Omega Charge. This is the event that uses the hammer from earlier, and you and your team have to charge it up to 100% by killing dinosaurs and then hope the fucker holding the hammer actually hits the pillar to progress. Where's he going? Homie! Come! No, come here, no, boy! No, no, come, no, come, no, boy! No. This way! Worm Buster, you fucking gun! <laughs> Shit. Anyways, you gotta do this about three times, but you only have to fight the enemy if you both get to the final point. I've had a game where the enemy didn't even get to the final point, so sometimes PvP doesn't even happen in this one. And then next up we have Energy Taker, which is pretty much just a mix of Call of Duty's Domination and Kill Confirmed. Staying in the zone spawns energy tokens that you pick up for points, and you can steal enemy tokens from killing them if they had any. This game mode is obviously very PvP oriented, but you also need to watch yourself to make sure you don't get with a horde of dino. And the last event is what they call data key security. I'm gonna go ahead and call it payload race because that's what it really is. You spawn with a cart that has a health pool, and you have to stand on it to make it move down the track, while also defending it from dinos and other players. As an old TF2 fan, this one made me feel right at home. Payload Race was always one of those game modes that I always wanted to play more of, but the only map that I ever played it was fucking High Tower. I didn't feel like playing exclusively Trolls. The addition of the health to the cart does make it way more aggressive in PvP than I thought it would be, since not only can you go over to their cart and stop them from pushing, you can break the cart and halt it in its place till it gets revived. All right, and now for exosuits. Now, I'm just to be going over the general feeling of each exosuit, but if you want to read their abilities in detail, I'll make sure to put the ability page up at the beginning of each segment. And also, I'll be going on what order the game says, so if I look lost and confused on some exos and kind of confident on others, that's going to be why. And starting with this game's basic rifle tooting starter character that every game seems to have, Deadeye. It might sound like I dislike this character trope, but I really don't. There's something cathartic in just shooting a basic rifle with no gimmicks and a bunch of targets that I enjoy in a game. Deadeye's main role is to be a jack of all trades, which does make sense for him to be the de facto starting character. His rifle does decent damage and he has pretty good AoE with his grenades. His mobility isn't too bad with that dodge roll either, but I did have some problems figuring out how to use his thrust attack since it has such a long wind up, but if you use it in the air it gives you a little bit of extra mobility which is cool. And for his ultimate, or whatever this game chooses to call it, it's pretty good too. It auto locks on any target in front of you for pretty good range and does some decent damage. It can also hit players in PvP. I think that he's pretty good at both PvE and PvP, which is pretty fitting for his role. And honestly, since he's got so much versatility, you can really use any rig you want on him. I use the cannon most of the time since I'll just positioning the backline most of the time. 
I know it's ironic because I actually didn't use cannon in any of these clips, but I was forcing myself to try their stuff this game. Zephyr was one of those exos that I waited way too long to play since I didn't think his kit would really appeal to me, but I was super wrong and he actually ended up being one of my favorites to play. He's pretty much just an assassin, but he plays like a monk, kind of like comboing his moves together more than just a traditional one-shot burst assassin. But he is an assassin, so his melee attacks deal high damage to make up for his low health pool. His charging strike and his rising kick both do a ton of damage, and he can also displace anything you hit, except for large dinos. He also has a ton of mobility with two charges on his dash alongside the air he gets from his rising kick. His ultimate is just a heavy cooldown reduction for all of his other abilities in addition to having a flat heal. Definitely not the flashiest ultimate in the game, but I wouldn't underestimate it if he's diving your backline. He's definitely a very good exit for PvP due to his assassin nature, but he isn't totally useless in PvE since he can do big damage to large dinosaurs, but he will struggle in crowds compared to others' abilities. And this might be a reoccurring theme, but his best rig is definitely the blade. It's a free stun on a 20 second cooldown on an assassin. You really can't go wrong with free CC on assassin, so I always take it. Barrage is definitely the best AoE exo in the game, and since this game has a raptor swarm every 4 seconds. It's I can't see shit! <laughs> Summoning raptors! Summoning raptors! <laughs> Summoning raptors! Say the line, Bart. <laughs> See? There it is! He's pretty solid at the PvE elements in this game. His main weapon is just a classic six shot grenade launcher, but these ones light stuff on fire for extra damage over time. He gets even more fire with his triple shot, but the spread is pretty crazy if you try to hit anything at a distance. He's got a dodge roll that explodes, but the AoE is pretty small, so I didn't get to see if it did any damage, and I only played him once. Oh, and he's got a stun grenade, which is like my favorite kind of grenade, so that's pretty cool. And his ultimate will feel right at home with all my Titan brothers. He's got a code of the missile for an ultimate, and it's just as badass in this game. He's definitely an exo that's focused more towards PvE, but I mean, he's got code of the missile, so... And I'd say he's similar to Deadeye in that I couldn't really find a good fit for his rig. He can really use anything since he doesn't really need any more AoE or anything. But if I had to pick one, I'd say just go for cannon, so you have a little bit more burst damage. Vigilant is our resident sniper in this game, and oh boy, do I have some opinions on snipers in these games. I won't get too preach on you, I promise, but I absolutely hate snipers in this kind of games. Probably sims back from my days as a young lad on 2 for it. But in all honesty, Vigilant isn't that egregious compared to some of the other assholes that shall not be named for I might go into a coma from the blind fucking rage I feel every time I see that stupid ass sniper clip. Alright, I'm done, I promise. Anyways, Vigilant is a sniper and she has a weapon to match. She's got a 3 round burst or if you aim down the sights, a sniper shot you can charge and get more damage and penetration. Shocking, I know. She also has a frost bomb that you can CC even larger dinos with, giving you hit them enough times with it and a railgun shot to help you clear crowds. Her mobility isn't too great on the x-axis, but she gets mad hops from her double jump, which gives her a pretty nice way to get some breathing room for a second. And her ultimate is pretty much just a Hitman's Heatmaker special from TF2, which gives you full charge on your aim down sights that lasts about 8 seconds. And as you see from the clips here, she's pretty good at PvP, as any brain dead point and click adventure of a character is, but she's not totally trash in PvE since her charge shot and railgun penetrate, and her frost bomb has an AoE to and for the rig, I normally just went cannon since I'm already long range anyways, but if you had an enemy vigilant tying you down in a sniper fight, you could just take the shield and block one or two of their shots while also being able to fire back. And the first tank exo is... Roadblock. Who I actually forgot the name of as soon as I switched off of him because he was so bad. As someone who loves playing big tanks and especially those with big ass shields, I was super disappointed in it. He does have a big Reinhardt shield, so that's obviously a defensive tank. But, as you could see in the sniper gameplay, it breaks off in parts. So, while that's pretty cool for a mechanic, it makes a bad character even worse. His primary is just bashing stuff with his fists, which, don't get me wrong, is a good time. But it deals barely any damage. His shield, although, has a shove, which has a large AoE. And anything that hits a wall from the shove also gets stunned. He's also got this taunt where he bangs his fists together and any dino in front of him gets taunted, but he's stuck in a channel the whole time, so in my opinion, it makes it really even worth using most of the time. It also states that enemy players affected by the taunt have their evasiveness decrease, 
which I'm not really sure what it means, but I never even saw it come to play anyways. And he's got the most pitiful dash ever, which to be fair, he is a tank, but come on, it is like three inches. And trust me, I know what three inches looks like. But his ultimate is actually kind of cool. You make a tornado on yourself and it sucks up dinos and enemy players and swirls them around your head like a tornado. And you can fire the ability to shoot the tornado in front of you. I'd say that he's equally good. I'm doing finger quotes that you can't see, but I am in PvP due to his tornado and his shield and PvE because of his taunt. And honestly, it doesn't really matter what rig you play because you won't be doing shit anyways. But if you want to be somewhat useful, you can take the blade and have a real CC. And I'll go ahead and add this extra bit. I think he could be good, don't get me wrong, but he was horribly underpowered in this beta. I like these kind of characters and I hope to see him get better, but I don't know. They got three months. I mean, there's no way they can't fucking fix it in three months. And next up, we got my man Fencer. And he's so good in this game. You don't need a javelin cancel anymore. You just fly around and mortar the shit out of stuff and... Oh wait, this is the wrong cool exosuit guy. Never mind. All right, and now we have the slightly less badass Fencer, Krieger. He was definitely my favorite exo to play though. And it's not just because he looks like a Fencer. He plays the role of a defensive tank. We still have stuff to go in when he needs to. His chain gun deals low damage, but has a high rate of fire, you know, being a chain gun and all. His missiles are auto lock onto anything larger than a Raptor and stun anything it hits. You can dump fire the rockets, but they're pretty inaccurate if you don't have a lock. He's also got the Halo 3 bubble shield, and it's pretty awesome. Not only does it defend against projectiles, small dinos can't even get inside the circle. Big dinos can break it, but if they do, they get stunned. His mobility isn't too crazy since he do be a tank, but he does get to go full Iron Giant with his passive. Follow Holy shit, watch. Iron Giant. <laughs> to next Superman. <laughs> I go, <laughs> you stay. <laughs> he also has a very long dash, and it doesn't say it in the description, but it also shoves small dinos and enemy players out of the way, and it does a bit of damage. His ultimate lets him paint a circle on the ground that gets hit with a barrage of missiles, and it makes for a really, really good zoning tool. And Krieger's actually got a couple good options for rigs. I mean, cannon's always good because you can have burst your kit. And I found some success with using the shield since your own bubble shield can't move, so you can kind of push forward with that. And of course, blade is always good because it's, well, I mean, it's blade, so. And for the last tank, figure quotes once again, we have Murasame. This is another one that I avoided playing, and I actually ended up liking him a lot. He's supposed to be a tank, but all he really does tank-wise is taunt stuff. I consider him more of an off tank because he just does a ton of damage anyways. But for his primary attack, he's got his sword, which does a good amount of damage. And it also doesn't say it in the description, but the attack actually changes depending on which way you're moving, which I always think is a cool system for melee in games. Next up, he's got his circle slash, which does okay damage, but it taunts everything it hits. And this combos amazingly into his parry, which requires a set amount of damage before you can actually do the attack. His movement's also pretty good. He's got his grappling hook, which launches him in the air close to his target. And after you launch yourself, you can do a jump in addition to having a spinning downward slash for an extra attack. Murasame's ult is that he just stands there menacingly. And after a hefty charge up, he does a very not tank-like amount of damage to anything in front of him for about 50 meters or so. Murasame is very good in PvE due to his taunt parry combo. And he is also very good in PvP, especially when you can find yourself a 1v1. And for his rig, I'm gonna go ahead and say, you guessed it, Blade again, uh, because it's Blade and it's on a melee character. And also because Drill just let me down super hard right there. And I don't know how that didn't kill him. And our first support is the Witch Doctor. I didn't actually play him that much and he was the second guy I picked. So my clips are pretty limited. Although I will say that he's a very good healer and he's got three Wiz healing his team, including his ult. 
His primary fire is a Tesla Blast that does very good AoE damage, and it's good since Raptor Storms are so common, but it does have a battery that needs to be recharged, so it can go off on you in bad situations if you're not careful. His healing pulse also gives movement speed to any allies he hits, but if you hit an enemy with it, you can also charge back up your Tesla. He also gets a healing field that can hold up to two charges. It's not too terribly exciting, but it works well, especially if you have a bubble shield on your team. His movement is also pretty good. You can launch yourself forward, and you also get an extra jump while you're doing it. Witch Doctor's ultimate is a large circle that full heals allies while also giving a huge defense buff to anyone inside. It also says that the field limits enemy movement, but I couldn't really figure out what that means exactly, but I'm just going to assume it's like a slow or something like that. He's pretty good in PvE due to his healing and AoE Tesla gun, but in PvP his ultimate is alone enough to win a fight most of the time. And for the rig, I'd say he's pretty much melee, so bust out that MF blade once again. Skywave is a very strong support with more than just healing this time. She specializes in flying and casting AoE heals for her team, which I thought was pretty fun. Her primary attack is just an explosive shot that heals allies and hurts enemies. It does have a bit of lead time though, so get used to your teammates juking all your shots constantly. Her secondary blast heals allies and does pretty good damage to enemies, alongside giving them an awful visual CC effect that'll make you think someone poured a root beer on your GPU. She also has a gravity grenade which tosses around all enemies inside of it, and it has a lesser effect on enemy players though, but it's still pretty annoying to deal with. Vertical movement and flying is pretty much her whole gimmick. After jumping, if you press jump again, she'll hover and very slowly drift down. But you can also use her slipstream to shoot yourself up in the air and it'll automatically use hover for you. You can also hold up to two charges of Slipstream. Skywave's ultimate is a huge circle that puts all enemies around her into a very long stun. This time it does not have diminished effects on other players, and it is very, very obnoxious to deal with. She's definitely very good at PvE for her burst heals and the ability to fly above raptor swarms, and her ult is just another PvP game changer at the press of a button. I'll say that I think the best rig is just good old cannon, since you're going to be flying high in the sky anyways. So Neja, or Jet Set Radio, or Nimbus, or whatever you call it, ended up actually being my favorite support. I took one look at her kit and was like, fuck that, I'm not reading all that shit, lamal. But after about two minutes, I realized how absurdly strong she was. Her primary attack is two sets of pistols, one set does damage, and one set heals allies. It doesn't sound that crazy on paper, and that's kind of why I didn't bother at first, because I was like, you know, every other medic can do damage and heal. Why would I want to pick this one that has to separate that? But the auto aim on the healing shots is absolutely ridiculous, and the heal itself is a lot. And since it's almost impossible to miss, you're going to have your entire team overhealed almost every second of the match. Spread shot is great for giving yourself some breathing room from raptors, or even to clear the way for allies. It does a decent amount of damage, but it's more about the CC than anything. Besides the roller skates, her mobility actually isn't anything too crazy, but her movement skill itself is. See, she sends out a hologram that runs towards wherever you pointed it, and you can press the button again to teleport. Not too crazy, but if you read the fine print, it fucking reses your teammates when it runs into them. This is one detail that made this character go from an A to an S plus in my opinion. Neja's ult here isn't exactly Witch Doctor tier, but it's decent. All it does is make a shockwave that heals allies and knocks back enemies. I know me just got yelled at for pushing targets away from my Murasama, but that's just me. She excels in PvE and PvP, but enemy players can stop your hologram sometimes. I couldn't quite figure out exactly what was stopping it, but I think shooting it and maybe even standing in front of it will despawn it. And even though she can stay at range, I find myself in the middle of a lot of fights anyways, so I'll be taking my blade rig personally. I'm sure you can make some other stuff work, but I haven't tried it. Now that I'm done with the exosuits, I'm just going to give my personal opinions about the game. I went into this game not expecting very much, and I only fully really played it because my friends wanted me to. And since it was free, I mean, how could I say no? After my impressive 6.9 hours of gameplay, I realized that it was actually a pretty good time, and that I would only play more the next day, but the beta was ending. The game is fun, and I really did enjoy playing it, but I've got some things that I think keep this game from existing longer than a week and a half. It's got a $70 price tag for a game that will also have an in-game store and a battle pass. I know that's not exactly uncommon these days, I mean Call of Duty does it every year and Activision is doing just fine, but this isn't some AAA game and unless I've just been living under a fucking rock, it doesn't have a lot of marketing. 
I mean, just a week ago, I had no idea this game even existed. But if you want proof of a game that absolutely botched the monetization and died quickly after, look no further than Gundam Evolution. This is a game that I loved and even got me pretty far into Gundam, and Gundam is one of my favorite series now, but Classic Bamco made the only way to get currency time-gated and sparse. And if you look here, you can tell exactly when the population had enough of that shit. If these were single-player games, it really wouldn't matter, but you literally can't play these games without a decent player base, and if Gundam Evolution was free, imagine paying $70 for a game that would be dead in two weeks. But all negativity aside, this game does have promise. And also, if you guys didn't know, it will be free on Xbox Game Pass, which you would only get for like $1 most of the time, and it also works on PC. So I got a feeling this will help with the population problem, but we gotta see if they keep people coming back. Another thing I've seen a lot of people complain about is the PvP. I almost didn't even get the game because I saw so many people on Steam complain about how it's pay to win and PvP absolutely just ruins the game. Now, I'm not sure what they meant by pay to win, but I do understand if they were upset that it wasn't purely just PvE. Now, I can be a bit of a fiend for a challenge, so I wanted to see how valid all these PvP unbalanced claims were. And honestly, that's why my friend got in on it too, because we wanted to see if these claims were real. I feel just casual gamers complain about getting absolutely dunked on. And I don't mean to stroke my own ego, but me and my two friends literally got an 8 game win streak as our first games, and I barely even knew what I was doing. I only lost because I thought it would be an epic idea to play fucking Roadblock. And I'm not saying that people can't just enjoy PV, and not everyone needs to be a sweat lord on PvP. But I don't think that all these matter views aren't just coming from people who don't want to learn and adapt, but people who just wanted to shoot them up that they can chill on. And that I mean, I can find that. And to be fair, it is marketed like a PvE game. If you go to the Steam store, the only way you can tell it's a PvP game is by looking at the Steam tags, and that's not even part of their description. But as the game stands right now, I believe that the PvP part of the game is the best part, and the PvE could be a bit of a slog to get through, as there's really not too much challenge in it. I mean, and they definitely could change it. I mean, Fortnite was a PvE game that got turned into a full PvP game, so it's not like it can't happen. But I honestly do like the game how it is set up right now. I just think that they could add a little bit more spice to the PvE part of it. Well, that's my whole review. If you made it this far, thank you for watching it all the way through. This is my first deep review on a game, so it took me over three days of working on it to get it finished. I normally just make shitpost videos, so this is a lot different from what I'm used to, but I kind of enjoyed it. If you want to see any more videos like these, please do let me know in the comments, but after this one, I think I'm going to take a break. And you know, I feel like I forgot something. Oh wait, fuck, don't forget to smash that motherfucker!